What's up, what's up? Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Garage Learning From Home. I'm Steve Geralt, and today I'm so excited to share an amazing video Riley put together in his apartment about how he attempted my famous burger drop at home in his tiny apartment all by himself. What some of you might not know is that that burger drop video was self-produced by myself as a proof of concept to show what visual engineering is. So even though it was self-produced, I still had a camera robot, a phantom camera, a studio, a food stylist, and a, and a whole crew to help me execute that video. So today, I'm really excited to share this video that Riley made trying to replicate my burger drop in his house with things he has lying around, homemade lights, his dining room table as a surface, you name it. He doesn't have any of the things I had, but I'm still pretty impressed by what he did. He's going to share what went right, what went wrong, and what he learned along the way. Make sure you stick around after the video as I'm going to come back and share a few more tricks to help you try to accomplish this from home. So here we go. Take it away, Riley. Hi guys, it's Riley with Garage Learning, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about a shot I tried to recreate here at home, Steve's famous burger drop. Now before I start off, I wanna say this isn't gonna to compare to the original shot with a phantom camera at a thousand frames per second and a fancy robot and Arduino running the timing, controlling everything, but it is still pretty cool and it's doable with some materials you might have at home. I shot this at 1080p resolution at 240 frames per second. That's something that most smartphones can do nowadays. Fortunately, my smartphone can't do much anymore. So I use the red, which basically just shoots the same resolution as your iPhone. Now this red is an older camera. It's not a slow motion camera either. At its highest frame rate, 240 FPS, it just shoots 1080p. So you'll see that my camera is sideways here on my tripod. I had to do a little <laughs> jerry rigging here to get it sideways. And you'll notice that I have a rig with rubber bands stretched over it and the ingredients stacked on top of each other. So it's a simple concept here. Uh, basically we use fishing line or rubber bands or elastic line or something that is gonna get out of the way um, to hold up ingredients, um, one layer on top of another layer on top of another layer. And then we cut that fishing line or rubber band or elastic line, um, which hopefully moves out of the way and lets the ingredients fall all together to create one sandwich. Now the original burger drop rig used an Arduino to control the timing of the elastic line being cut. It actually had several different servos with blades on them, which would cut the elastic line the same exact time every time to get fairly consistent results. Now, when Steve was shooting the original burger drop, that was super useful because they could tweak the timing and control everything to fall exactly how they wanted it to. Here at home, I don't have the elastic fishing line, which actually turns out to be the best tool to suspend the ingredients in midair. And I'm not gonna be setting up anything for timing control. So the idea here is that I've built this U-shaped rig um, that I can stretch rubber bands over and then put the ingredients on layer by layer. I built the rig out of aluminum 8020. Um, you don't have to use 8020. I just happen to have some around. You could use wood or or whatever you have laying around. The important things here are it needs to be able to stand up by itself. Uh, you need to be able to stretch rubber bands over it. And if you can, um, it'd be nice to have a groove in one side where you can run your utility knife or X-Acto blade or whatever you're using down to cut the rubber bands all at the same time. 8020 works out well because it has these slots in them for slot nuts. I just ran my blade through that slot. So before I tried the rig out with a burger, I started doing some tests with some bread and some cheese just to see how things would fall. I shot a bunch of different tests. I tried two layers, three layers, four layers. I tried cutting from the top to the bottom. I tried cutting from the bottom to the top. By the way, I found that cutting from the top to the bottom is definitely the way to go. And all in all, I was pretty happy with my results. Things seemed to be working. So I decided it was time to move on and try things with a burger and a real-ish background. So this is what my setup looked like. I didn't really have a proper background or surface. So I used, um, my desk and my wall. I used an LED panel that I built to light the whole thing and I put my Sony off to the side to get some BTS while I tried to get the shot. And well, no duh, this was the, the hardest part. It took a very long time to get everything to work properly. So everything was in position and now it was time to do it for real. All right, well, maybe, maybe not that time. How about the next one? That's weird. Uh, let's just do it again. 
Oh boy, that's that's when I realized it was gonna be a while. So right off the bat, things didn't work very well and I had some pretty inconsistent results, but that was to be expected. The height of each layer and the placement of everything changed. The angle at which I was cutting the rubber bands changed. Basically, I kind of just thought things would work and that I didn't have to pay real close attention to the small details and making sure everything was as close as possible to the same every single time. What I quickly learned is that um, consistency is key if you want this to work even once. And so I started setting everything up the same way or as close as I could to the same way every time. And I started trying things using only the heavier ingredients, the essential ingredients, and the things that were not likely to get slingshotted by the rubber bands. So I tried some bread on the bottom, some lettuce on top of that bread. Um, the first layer was a burger, the second layer was some cheese, and then there was the third layer of a bun. And so I tried this multiple times, um, a bunch of times actually, to try to see if I could get some consistency and I could. Um, it wasn't what I was going for. The bun and the cheese were still getting shot to the right um, every time I cut the rubber band, but it was happening pretty consistently. So the fact that it wasn't working was a little annoying, but it wasn't working the same way every time, so I tried to change things a little. Now I tried a few different rubber bands to see if the lighter objects behaved better on rubber bands with less tension or more tension. Um, all in all, I found that they worked the best on thinner rubber bands, but the thinnest rubber bands I had still weren't that thin, so when I cut them, they would kind of shoot the ingredients to the right a little bit. So instead of giving up, I shifted the ingredients to the left a little bit, hoping that when I cut them, they would fall correctly this time. And here's where I started getting close to getting the results that I wanted. Everything was finally falling in the right spot, more or less consistently. The only thing that wasn't consistent was whether the bun or the cheese landed exactly the right way. And for a while, they just kind of bounced out of frame. But I didn't give up, I kept trying, and eventually I got this. Now that is something that I was happy with. I dragged it into Final Cut and used frame interpolation to slow it down even more. Um, I exported the final video as a square and added some movement to the original vertical frame. And here's the end result. So yeah, um, maybe it's not. Steve's burger drop. Maybe it's not uh, phantom camera quality. Maybe I don't have a bolt in my room, but I still think this is pretty awesome. And it just goes to show that you can get cool results at home with limited tools, as long as you think creatively. So there you go. I hope this inspires you to go shoot something at home. Hope everyone's staying safe during quarantine and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you, Riley, so much for working so hard to try to make it look as good as you could working from home with none of the tools that you wish you had. If any of you are gonna try this at home, I wanna share a few tricks to help you out. So number one tip, use the thinnest rubber bands you could find. Even better, elastic string that's used for bracelets and for necklaces for kids with beads and stuff is actually way better than rubber bands are. You can find the elastic that I use on our Amazon shopping page, the link's below. Number two trick, make sure you use a really sharp blade and replace that blade every few takes. When we did the burger drop, I used scalpel blades, and after every two takes, we replaced the blades. Believe it or not, they start dulling ever so slightly every take, and that can lead to inconsistent results, which is really annoying. Tip number three, make sure whatever device is holding the rubber bands that you create is super stable, doesn't shake, because then your ingredients are gonna just be plopping and falling off all over the place. So you wanna make sure that's like super rigid, super strong, and isn't gonna be moving around as you're trying to put the ingredients on. Tip number four, Choose your ingredients wisely. The only reason the burger drop worked when I did the big fancy one is the fact that I played around with different layers and, and how I layered the ingredients so that when they actually landed, they would actually land together. Tip number five, don't be afraid to use some tricks to hold things together. Let's say you wanna use bacon, use super glue the, to glue the two pieces of bacon together before you place them and drop them. Tip number six, once you have all the ingredients on the rubber bands, make sure you wanna spray everything with a little water, maybe the meat with a little oil, because you wanna make sure that when this all lands together, you, you have a little action happening and all the ingredients feel alive. It's really easy for these ingredients to start looking really bad. You know, lettuce starts turning brown, the meat starts looking dry, the cheese starts turning funny colors. So, you know, you wanna make sure you go quickly once you have all your ingredients loaded and don't forget to spritz them with a little water maybe before. Tip number seven, only space out the ingredients as much as you need, because anything more, every little inch higher that you go, makes it more likely that things are gonna bounce and not land correctly. Tip number eight, in the real video, I use scalpel blades mounted on servo motors to cut the strings, but you're gonna be cutting it with a knife at home. So my advice is make sure you have a nice, smooth surface to cut against. 
A great trick on how to do this is get a plastic cutting board, cut a strip out of it, and mount that to your surface since cutting boards are designed for knives to cut along smoothly. After a few takes, you might need to switch out that little strip if it starts getting too bumpy if you cut against it a few too many times. Tip number nine. Don't forget that you want to light this as beautifully as you can. So make sure you spend a little time massaging the light to make sure that the meat looks good and the veggies look fresh. Tip number 10, last but not least, realize that this is a scientific method and you have to really make incremental adjustments and really realize what went right, what went wrong on every take. Obviously there's a little bit of luck, but really the more scientific you can be about it, the better effect that you're gonna have. And above all, make sure you have fun with this. It's a learning process, but it could also be a lot of fun. And if you're gonna try this at home, remember, it doesn't have to be a burger. You could do this with a chicken sandwich, you could do this with a sub sandwich, you could even do it with a stack of pancakes and watch them all kind of come together. Realize that this trick isn't just a one trick pony, you could actually do a lot of different things using the same system. So if you do attempt this, make sure you share it with some behind the scenes and hashtag it, creativity in isolation, and hashtag the garage learning, and I would love to see what you do. Thank you so much for joining us. Please stay safe and stay creative.